Hello, chill computer guy. Today we're in Reason 10. We are taking a look at a template that I'm actually putting together. I'm going to make it available for download here in the next uh, month or so. I just recently uh, reached 1,000 subscribers and uh, that has really got me feeling like I want to make some downloadable content. So that pretty much brings me to today's uh, little rant, if you will. And it has to do with, with this mixer here, the 6.2 here. The fact is, this is an old mixer. What I can't stand about it is you can't click and name these mix channels. You just can't. You can't name them. They're basically the default of whatever you plug in here. I would love to be able to double click and name these. Um, of course, you can name the main uh, mix here, but you can't, uh, you can't name these, which is just mind boggling. I don't understand why that is. But yeah, the fact that you can't double click on this and name this is just, is kind of, kind of shitty. Now, if we take a look at the 14.2, uh, same issue. You can't really click on these. You can't click and name these. You can, of course, name the main mixer, which is great. Whatever I plug into this channel is going to be the default name here. Stuff like that is just little little things. You can't name your, your auxes. It's by default whatever you plug into here. These mixers are old. What I would like to see is, is a redesign. You know, this 14.2, these knobs are tiny. It's basically looking like a redrum here. Super powerful mixer, super handy mixer. It's got four send and returns on it. It's got a little EQ in here. But back in the day, this was your mixer. You didn't have the SSL. And so uh, this thing is pretty outdated. Um, the inability to click on these and name your channels is a huge thing. And then also, uh, you know, they kind of look a little shitty. So I think the mixers should definitely get update. Another thing is your M-Class devices. If we put the M-Class EQ in here, you can see this frequency here, you know, and you can tell what it is. But if I uh, double click it and I edit automation here, you can see that I'm automating my low shell frequency, okay? And you can see the fact is the values right here. It's giving me these random arbitrary numbers. Like what did this? Uh, what does this mean? You know what I mean? Um, it goes from zero clear up to a thousand. And you can see that I'm automating my low shell frequency now. I why why these uh, arbitrary numbers? I want actual you know data I can use here. You know what if I want to cut it off at you know 150 hertz? Like how do I? What's going on with these numbers? Like, and this is something that has kind of existed in propeller head reason for a long time that I know I've fussed about in the past. But yeah, that's a that's an update issue as well. Um, now some devices like your Casa, if you were to uh, put that in, great. Now if I go edit automation on here, you can see that this is actually giving me numbers I can use. So hats off to Casa, you know. So I just find that in a lot of these uh, rack extensions are giving me data you know and uh, uh, propeller head devices are not giving me data I can use they're giving me arbitrary numbers and so those are kind of my two things the ability to double click and name these individual channels on the mixer you know the masking tape thing you know it's kinda of getting old if it's gonna be masking tape I'll go with that look uh, but I want to at least be able to double click and name these individual channels. You know, that's a that's a huge thing for me. You know, and these mixers, they do need upgrading, but I don't want them to look like toys. I want them to be upgraded and look sophisticated. The second one is when I am automating these parameters, I would like to have a number up here that makes sense, that is not just a random number. You know, my frequency goes from 0 to 1,000. Well, I don't think so. I need the actual data that I can, you know, when I'm doing automation, I want to know what I'm automating and what I'm automating it to. That's super important. But yeah, this is the M class EQ. But if I actually take it to a newer device, like a rack extension device, now I'm getting data I can actually use. I'm actually getting data up there, which is representative to what I'm automating, you know. You know, it's stepped automation because of the, uh, the rack extension, the knob is stepped. So as you can see, I'm actually getting data I can use. So the rack extension, the MP5, is actually giving me data I can use when automating. Data that represents something. Whereas the old M-class equalizer is giving me an arbitrary number. And when I go to automate, I have no idea what I'm automating this to. That's a biggie as well. So those are my two things today. You know, quick little constructive criticism. I'm not trying to, you know, complain about propeller head reason. But there are a lot of little things. And so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to make some videos. And every couple of days, I'm going to bring up a couple more new things um, that, in my opinion, are pretty simple to fix, but really do matter, I think, to, uh, to not only me, but pretty much all propeller head reason users. 
So yeah, there it is. Two more quick things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make these little rants, and they're going to be short, but I'm going to try to mention two things with each little rant. Things I would like to see um, improved here in Propeller Head Reason 10. Things to be improved in maybe future updates. Things that I would imagine are pretty easy to fix, but things that do affect my workflow on a daily basis. So be sure to subscribe, give a thumbs up, and we'll see you guys again. Bye-bye now.